just want to thank God for you. Welcome to the 8 p.m. Tuesday evening prayer. Time. We appreciate God coming and joining us this evening to pray. And we just uh, believe God that uh, every time we pray, he listens to us. So this evening, we just want to start to pray. This evening, I just want you to start by just thanking God for tonight, thanking God for today, uh, thanking God for uh, life, thanking God for everything that you can thank him for. Just thank him for uh, protection, for provision, for everything that he has done for us. Let's just keep thanking God. Let's just thank God. I mean, evening. And God will bless us, how God is blessing us and showing us his salvation. Just give him praise for who he is. Give him praise for what he done. Give him praise because he is God. Let him know that he is a king of kings and he is a lord of lords. Just bless his name. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is with me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Just give him praise tonight. Give him praise tonight. Thank him for his God, for his goodness, for his wonderful works. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Father, we just want to thank you this evening. We'll bless you for who you are, for what you are, for what you are doing for us. And what you are uh, determined to do for us. We give you praise for your provisions in our lives. For how you have blessed us. How you have made provisions available for us. We give you praise for how you have uh, uh, secured us. How you have protected us. How you are guiding us. How you are leading us, oh God. We give you praise. We thank you, oh God. Oh, thank you, oh God, for making, for making us, uh, giving us a portion in the land of the living. We give you praise and we thank you. We glorify you and exalt you. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, this evening, I just want to start talking about uh, uh, hope. I want us to just uh, pray about hope. Because if you look at everything that's happening within the world, within our society, it's, you know, it, it, can, it, it can bring a... a, a, a a state of hopelessness to us. There are so many things that we are battling with and they look uh, like things that are just beyond us as humans. And for the most part, yes, they are. We can't solve some of these issues that are happening, but we know somebody who we can run to, who we can depend on, who can help us in all the situation. So when you put the mixture of all the tension that is going on in terms of you know, uh, uh, the police issues, and uh, the racial divide and all of that, and then you add uh, the COVID-19 into it, the coronavirus thing, and then you now add, you know, the economic anxiety into it. Everything is just, you know, uh, a, a good melting point for uh, a state of hopelessness that can bring a state of hopelessness. But one thing the Bible does not want us to do is to lose hope. We must always keep hope alive. We must always keep hope alive. So this morning, I just want us to pray for, uh, for hope and um, just um, thank God for hope. So this evening, I just wanted to just begin to pray, to pray. Let's pray for hope again for our society, for our country, for our communities, for ourselves, for our families, that God will help us to be able to hope, to be able to keep hope alive. The Bible says hope that is deferred makes the heart sick so that our hearts will not be sick. Our hearts will be alive to, to, to things. Our life will not be uh, uh, um, uh, disrupted due to a lack of hopelessness, due to a lack of hope. Father, we just want to thank you this evening because we are just beginning to speak hope again into our community, into our life, into our nation, in the name of Jesus. We are praying for hope again, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that men and women will begin to have hope in the name of Jesus, that where hope is, they will not lose hope, oh God, in the name of Jesus, because we know that hope is an ingredient for great faith, because your word declares that, uh, uh, that hope deferred makes a heart sick and that faith is a substance of things hoped for. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know how important hope is that we cannot practice uh, our faith without hope. But this evening, we thank you, God, for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus, that that hope keeps us, that hope sustains us in the name of Jesus. Therefore, we are not faint-hearted. We, uh, we, 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 we don't lose faith, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we thank you, O oh God, because hope is alive. In the name of Jesus, we speak hope again, O oh God, in the name of just where hope is missing. We give you praise and we thank you, O oh God, 
for the hope that is in Christ Jesus. The hope that we can hold on to, that we can walk with, that we can run with, that we can live it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O God, that everything that is going on in our society, O God, will not murder the hope that, we, that you are giving us. In the name of Jesus, that our hearts are united with hope. The hope that is resting in Christ Jesus alone. Father, we thank you. We speak hope again to our church. We speak hope again to families. We speak hope to people, to children, to communities, oh God, around the nations, around the world, in the name of Jesus, that the hope of God will not be lost in the name of Jesus. We thank you for hope. We give you praise. We bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, when we talk of hope, sometimes it's nebulous. You just look at hope, you just say, oh, okay, hope, you just, uh, uh, just a something you just want. But the Bible describes hope for us in, 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 in the book of Psalm, Psalms 42 uh, from verse 1. What is hope? Because all those books of the scriptures, Psalms 41 to 47, talks about, about the same text or the, about the same thing. So in one of the uh, Psalms, sorry, before I go to verse 1, the Bible tells us in Psalms 42 verse 11, uh, it says, um, Psalm 42 verse 11, he said, why so downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you so disquieted in me? Hope in God. Why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you so disquieted in me? Hope in God. In other words, hope is always in God. When we say hope, we're not just talking about just a wish, just a desire. Yes, those are part of the hope. But what we call hope in itself, is something that we have from God. It's something that emanates from God. It's something that comes from God. When our hope is disconnected from God, then we lose hope even of the simple basic things that we think or we desire and we hope in our day-to-day -day lives. So the hope in God is what we're praying for this afternoon. That we, our hope that is connected to God through God in Christ Jesus will not be lost. What is that hope like? What is it like in verse 1 of verse 42? In chapter 42, verse 1. What did he say? He said, as a deer panted after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you. That is hope in God. That is hope in Christ. In other words, there's a pursuit and a desire for God, just like the deer pants for water. So this evening, I just want you to just begin to lift up your voice and just begin to say, God, my hope is connected to you. My hope is linked in you. This afternoon, I thank you because there's a thirst for hope. There's a thirst for you in my life. I have a thirst. I have a hunger. I have a desire for you in the name of Jesus because my hope is connected to God and hope that is connected to God is hope that can be depended on in the name of Jesus. The hope that I have in God is not a fluffy hope. It's not a hope that will not come to pass. It's a hope that God will bring to pass himself because God not change. And because he does not change, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, my hope that is anchored in God, in the name of Jesus, is secured. Securely anchored in the name of Jesus. Father, I just want to thank you this evening for hope in God, that we're hoping you. And because oh, that hope is alive, we thank you, O oh God, because we will attain that which you want us to attain, in the name of Jesus. Thank you because we can hope in God because of the work of Jesus Christ. That hope is in that hope is connected to God. It is anchored in God in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Because all things are working for us because we hope in you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for we cannot be discouraged. Thank you because we cannot be uh, 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 annihilated. In the name of Jesus. Because your hope will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We glorify you and we honor you. We bless your holy name. We give you praise and we exalt you. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. I just want us to just, at this time, we just want to just begin to pray for what I call hope killers. We want to begin to pray against hope killers, things that, that kill our hope, things that uh, sabotage our hope in God. Because like I said earlier on, I want you to know that even your faith is contingent upon the hope that you have. That's why in Hebrews 11, the Bible tells us, it says, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And because they are the substance of things hoped for, they are also the evidence of things not seen. Therefore, what we are saying this evening is that there are some things that can uh, uh, short-circuit our hope in God. And if your hope in God is short-circuited, it is very difficult for you to be able to walk by faith. Because hope gives you a vision for the future. 
It helps you to see the future even now based on uh, uh, what your desire or anticipation of God is or your, or, or your hope in God is. So this evening, I just want us to just begin to pray against some things I call the, the, um, the, 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 the hope killers, things that, can, that, that are able to kill our hope, things that, are beginning, things that can begin to uh, uh, make our hope uh, or bring hopelessness, a state of hopelessness, a state of uh, uh, a lack of desire to hope again in God. So number one thing that I saw from Psalms 42 if you read uh, uh, verse 5, Psalm 42, verse 5. Psalms 42, verse 5. Look at what it says. Uh, let, me read from, let me read from the NLT. I, I like the NLT uh, version. And verse 5. He said, why am I discouraged? Why am I discouraged? Now, number one hope killer or hope, something that can, you know, short circuit our hope, is discouragement. And what is discouragement? We are discouraged when we cannot see the future. We are discouraged when the things that we want or the things that we desire are not coming on the way we think they should come on. But I want to tell you this afternoon that hope in God is hope that can be is, is hope that can be depended on. If you don't depend, if your hope is not anchored in God, then it is subject to change, it's subject to the citizens of life. But when hope is anchored in God, when the things that you desire and look for are ho uh, uh, in the future are anchored in God, it is very, 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 very important to guide against discouragement because God will not fail. The only other equation that can affect our hope is us in the area of discouragement. And a lot of times that's what the devil tries to do to make sure that we're discouraged and we cannot see the future. All right? We cannot see anything that is good. Because of all the things that are happening around us. Now, like I said in the beginning, if you add corona, if you add uh, the racial problems that we have, if you look at the economic uh, situations, everything looks bleak. Nothing looks like they are going to come uh, to, to, to reality. So we have a part period of issues that have come together to discourage us, to make us not see the future. But in God, God uh, if our hope is anchored in God, and our life is anchored in God. We can always look for the possibilities. Because the Bible tells us, God tells us, that with him, all things are possible. Irrespective of what is going on around us. Irrespective of what we are seeing around us. All things are possible to him that believe. And that is an encouraging scriptures for all, for scripture for us not to be discouraged. So this afternoon, or this evening, I want to just begin to pray against the spirit of discouragement. Pray that God, in the name of Jesus, I just rise up against any spirit of discouragement in the name of Jesus. This evening, this evening, I stand against any activity of discouragement that would discourage me from seeing the hope of Jesus Christ, that would discourage me from being disconnected from the hope of, of God that I have, that I'm connected to, in the name of Jesus. I realize this evening that the only thing that can separate me from the hope of God, the only things that can bring a uh, uh, state of to my life is when I begin to see discouragement. In the name of Jesus, I come against every activity of discouragement. I am not discouraged in the name of Jesus because I know that I am one with God and with God all things are possible. The Bible says, uh, to him that believe, nothing shall be impossible. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to look at the circumstances and situations that are making people discouraged. In the name of Jesus, we speak encouragement to every situation. We speak encouragement to the people in our congregation. We speak encouragement to families in the name of Jesus. We speak encouragement to the society in the name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus that we are not discouraged. We declare in the name of Jesus that we are not cast down. In the name of Jesus, yes, in the name of Jesus we declare that we cannot be cast down. Oh, he said, why are you cast down, oh my soul? This evening I speak to my soul, I speak to my mind, I speak to my uh, uh, to, to, to my brain in the name of Jesus that you cannot be cast down you cannot be discouraged in the name of Jesus because the hope of God is alive in me the hope of God is alive in our church the hope of God is alive oh in his body the hope of God is alive in our nation again in the name of Jesus thank you for people who are hopeful are the ones that are going to have a voice. You begin to give people voices that of hope in the name of Jesus. You begin to give people perspective of hope in the name of Jesus rather than discouragement. For every discouragement, we, we, we ask for encouragement in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we thank you. We bless your holy name. 
We thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for blessing us with encouragement this afternoon. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We thank you. Still about this discouragement. Uh, if you know the story of, uh, uh, the story of David, uh, when everything went bad, everything went sour, everything went to uh, uh, as if nothing was working for him again. Guess what he said? The Bible declares, it's David encouraged himself in the Lord. In other words, what we're saying when we talk about encouragement or uh, a lack of discouragement, we talk about encouragement, we are talking about an encouragement in God. Remember, our hope is anchored in God. Therefore, our encouragement will also be anchored in God. So this evening, I just want to say that I encourage myself because my encouragement is anchored in God. I am encouraged this afternoon. I am encouraged this afternoon. This evening, in the name of Jesus, I am encouraged. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged in the Lord. Like David arose and encouraged himself in the Lord. I'm encouraged in the name of Jesus. I'm encouraged our community, our society, our nation has encouragement again because the voice of God is give you praise and we bless you. We glorify you. We adore you. We exalt you. In the name of In the name of Jesus we have prayed. And number two killer of hope. Number two killer of hope that I want us to pray against is sadness. Look at what it says in, in verse 5 also, uh, Psalms 42, verse 5. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? Why is my heart so sad? Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? If you read this Psalm, two, you, uh, Psalm 42, you will see what, why David is doing all this. David is discouraged because nothing seems to be working for him. In fact, the things that seem to be working before... And now he's discouraged. He's sad. All right? And those two things are impacting his hope in God. So he said, why is my heart so sad? Now, I just want us to just begin to bring before God everything that is happening, even within the wider society and even in our own private lives. Let's bring them before God. The coronavirus, uh, the, the, the racial tension that is going on all over the place. Uh, the economic uh, problem that is going on in the place, and whatever other things you think uh, is happening to you personally and in your family. It may be because of a child. It may be because of your health. It may be because, you know, of your finances. Whatever the thing is that is, uh, that, 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 that is, that, that is uh, like a, a, a hindrance to your joy, your, you know, your happiness. I just want us to just bring it before God now and just begin to declare that I am above sadness, that God has given me the oil of gladness above uh, 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 for, for joy in the name of Jesus. That in the place of sadness, I have joy. In the place of uh, uh, confusion and all those things, I have, I have direction. I am not sad in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that everything that is making me sad turns around in the name of Jesus. I'm beginning to see the goodness of God. I'm seeing the goodness of God. Uh, things may not be working like they should be working. Things may not look like they should look. Things may not Walk that you should walk, but I know that God, oh, God is not a man. God does not look the way it is seen, and that is why I put on the eyes of God to be able to look at my situation, to be able to look at my circumstance. I put on the eyes of God, the eyes of the Spirit, to be able to look at things the way God looks at them. That even though these things are happening, for the things that we see are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. For in the name of Jesus, whatever it is that I'm seeing, it is temporal in the name of Jesus. And because they are temporal, they are not controlling me. They are not ruling me in the name of Jesus. They don't determine what my heart is. But my heart is full of joy. My heart is full of joy because I have the source of joy that is the Holy Spirit on my inside in the name of Jesus. And because I'm full of joy, I am rejoicing always. And because I'm rejoicing always, I overcome sin. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, O God, because I, have over, I overcome sadness, everything that brings sadness to me and to my community and to my country. In the name of Jesus, we walk against them now, we speak against them now in the name of Jesus. We begin to see things the way God sees things. We begin to understand things the way God understands them. In the name of Jesus, we, we, we look at things. While we look at those things that, are, that, are, that do appear, we thank God. We, God, we just want to thank you that we see things with your own eyes. We see things with the eyes of Jesus. We see things with the eyes of faith. We see things the way God wants us to see them. Father, we give you praise. Father, we exalt you. Father, we glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. All right. 
another thing that is a hope killer, something that is a hope killer that I want us to do, that I want us to pray about, is number, one, uh, number three. So number one is discouragement. Number two is sadness. And number three is forgetting the goodness of God. A lot of times we think, uh, we, 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 I mean, a lot of times we see the things only that are happening around us. But we forget that God is always good. That even in the midst of the things that are not working, in the, thing, in the midst of the things of our sadness, in the midst of our, our rejection and dejection and things that are not working, in the midst of everything that is not working, we forget that all those things don't affect our God. All those things don't affect the goodness of God towards us. The Bible says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. For great is his faithfulness. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, we just want to pray that God just in remembrance always of your goodness. Put me in remembrance always of your goodness towards me, towards my family, towards my children, towards everything. Put me in remembrance always of your goodness towards my church. Put me in remembrance always towards, uh, uh, about the, uh, of your goodness in our nation. Put me in remembrance always in the name of Jesus. Help my mind to remember. Help my heart to receive uh, the ability to be able to remember every time that you are good, that your goodness never comes to an end. That your mercy prevails every time. In the name of the Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you in the name of Jesus that you're helping us with a mind that will remember your goodness. That will not forget your goodness. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all your benefits. This evening, in the name of Jesus, we begin to declare that we bless the name of the Lord. We declare we don't forget his goodness in the name of Jesus. And therefore, our hope is alive because we don't forget that God is good that, and he's good all the time in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh God. We speak remembrance to our mind. We speak remembrance to our hearts. We speak remembrance that our memory is sharp. Our memory is strong concerning the goodness of the Lord. Because it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. And we do not forget your word in Psalm 23, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Therefore, we thank you, O oh God. And our hope is alive because of this. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We bless you and we give you praise. We bless you and we give you praise. In the name of Jesus. All right. Another one. Number four. Remember, number one, hope killer, discouragement. Number two, hope killer is sadness. Number three, hope killer is what? Forgetting God's goodness. Number four, hope killer is our inability to see and to hear what God is doing and what God is leading us to do. We forget. Number one, number three, we forget. Number two, an inability to see and to hear of what God is doing. Let me read that verse from verse, uh, Psalm 42 from verse 7. Psalm 42 from verse 7. Look at what it said. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. In other words, each night, remember David was being discouraged and that's why he was writing this. David was discouraged every time. All right? David was discouraged. But as he was getting to verse 7, he was beginning to see that he is hearing the raging seas and the waves of the surging tides of God sweeping over him. In other words, the peace of God was surging and sweeping over him. And then he now remembered. Look at what he now remembered. He now remembered that each day. Now, this is a man that was complaining earlier on, but now because he can see he can hear what God is doing. He is now saying, but each day the Lord pours his failing, unfailing love upon me and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. I just want you to know that when we don't hear the voice of God, when we don't see what God is doing and what God is leading us into, it can lead to discouragement. But when we see, we can begin to remember what God is doing. We can begin to remember that he's good. We can begin to remember that we have a source of joy, a fountain of joy that cannot be, uh, that, that cannot be a, 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 a shortcut. We begin to discover that there's encouragement because God is our source of courage. So I just want us to pray this evening that God will open our ears. 
God will just open our ears, help us to open our ears, and help us to open our eyes of understanding to begin to see and to hear what his goodness is for us. To begin to see and to hear what his goodness is. And I just want you to begin to declare. Speak to your ears. Speak to your heart. Speak to your mind. Say, my mind is open. My ears are open. My understanding is enlightened. I know the, I know the voice of God. I hear the voice of God. I can see what God is doing. Even in the midst of all the confusion and the chaos, I can see that God is doing something. I understand that God is doing something. I believe that God is doing something. I know that God is doing something. And my eyes, is see, uh, my eyes are seeing them. My ears are hearing them in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus because our eyes are open. Our, 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 I mean, our eyes are open. Our ears are open. And our sight are seen what you are doing for us in the name of Jesus, how you are leading us, how you are guiding us, how you are directing us, what you are doing in our present, oh God, our eyes are open to it. Our eyes are seeing it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We just want to thank you, oh God, because of your unfailing love, like David said, that is washing over us every time, every day and every time in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you for your mercy, oh God, that is coming to us every day. You said the steadfast love of the Lord his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness towards us. We declare the greatness of your faithfulness, O oh God, in our families. We declare the greatness of your faithfulness to, in our jobs. We declare the greatness of your faithfulness in our health. We declare the greatness of your faithfulness, O oh God, concerning our finances, concerning our families, our children, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We declare the greatness of your faithfulness concerning our nations and its people, O oh God, in name of Jesus. We declare the greatness of your faithfulness, O God, towards our government in the name of Jesus. We declare the greatness of your faithfulness concerning our economy in the name of Jesus. We declare the greatness of your faithfulness, O God, in every area and every facet of our lives, O God, in the United States of America. We praise, we thank you, we glorify you, we exalt you. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for where you are leading us and, head, and we're headed to. We give you praise and we thank you, O God, because no, oh God, that your love for us is unfailing. And like David said, we declare that love of faith is washing over us every day and every time and every night. God, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We exalt you. We glorify you. Thank you, oh God. We bless you. We honor you. We give you praise. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Now, quickly, there are two things I know that can help us to sustain hope. There are two things that I can... I there are more of them, but for just the purpose of this prayer, there are just two things that I want, and I'll combine the two of them together. All right? And number one, praise. And then number two, giving of thanks. Number one, praise. And number two, giving of thanks. Look at what it said in verse 11 of Psalm 42. Look at what it said. He said, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. They said, I will praise him again. Why am I discouraged? Why am I sad? I will put my hope in God. Right? He said, I will put my hope in God. And what did he say immediately again? I will praise him again. In other words, why David was discouraged, why he was sad, why he was forgetting God's goodness, and why he was not listening to God and hearing God is one is fundamentally because he forgot that he was an object that was created to give God praise. So I just wanted to just lift up your uh, voices and just begin to give him praise, give him thanks, thank him for who he is, thank him, just praise him, say, God, I praise you this evening. I praise you concerning every situation, irrespective of what my situation is. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I exalt you. I glorify you. I thank you because your praise is present in my house. Your praise is present in our church. Your praise is present in our families. Your praise and your thanksgiving is present in every area of our life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, because we see your praise, we declare your praise, and we exalt your praise, oh God, in the congregation of the righteous, in the midst of the righteous. We give you praise. We thank you and we glorify you. Thank you for the presence of your praise. Thank you, oh God, because our hearts are full of praise. And our mouths are declaring your glorious praise, O God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O God, in the name of Jesus, that our hands are always lifted up in praise and, and, and thanksgiving to our God. We glorify you, O God, because we thank you that our praise is still coming, go, going forth. 
give of our situation in the name of Jesus. We praise you. Ah, like the song says, it says, praise the Lord. Praise him. In the sanctuary, praise him. Oh, in the firmament of his power, praise him. In the goodness of his, of his gloriousness, praise him. We thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that even from the rising of the sun unto the going on of the same, your name will be praised from us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Our mouth will declare your praise. Our heart will be lifted up with your praise in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we thank you. We glorify you and we exalt you. Thank you for doing. Thank you for what you are doing for us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We declare your praise. We declare your faithfulness. We declare your goodness. Oh, Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We thank you. Now, the other one is thanksgiving. It's thanksgiving also, you know, connected to, to praise. It's also connected to praise. Look at what it says. Verse 4, Psalm 42. My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. Now, there was something that was happening in the life of David that he forgot because he did not remember. He said, my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. What was it? I walked among the crowds of worshippers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. David forgot to give God praise and give him thanks. And that is one of the reasons why he was discouraged. In other words, what I'm saying is that our situation, our circumstances does not make, does not make, does not, does not uh, create uh, the hopelessness that we're in. What you are going through does not create hopelessness. It is your response to what you are going through that creates those state of hopelessness. All right? And one of the response to our situation and our circumstances, one of the responses that is going on is that we have to give him praise, we have to give him thanks. And David said that, oh, I remember now. My heart is breaking now because I remember what used to happen so that my hope can be sustained. And he said, it is when he used to worship God. It is when he used to give him praise. It is when he used to, be, uh, to, be, to lift God up in the congregation of worshipers. All right? And to give him thanks. So just finally, just begin to give him thanks this afternoon. Just begin to declare and say, God, help me that I will consistently de develop an attitude or a behavior where I will give you praise continually. I will give you thanks continually. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, his thanksgiving shall continually be in my mouth. That is what David decided. He said, his praise and his, uh, his praise will continually be in my mouth. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we declare your praise will continually be in our mouth, irrespective of what we are going through, irrespective of what you are seeing. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we bless you. We glorify you, O God, in the name of Jesus. We will not forget to give you thanks, O God, for all that you have done, all you are doing, and all that you will continue to do. Because as far as we know, as much as we know, as long as we know, O God, we know that we are secured in your care. We are secured in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I just want to thank you for joining us this evening. I want to praise God for you and bless him for all that uh, he is doing in our lives and um, in our families and also in our nation. So we are not moved by what we see, but we are moved by faith. So this evening, I just want to encourage you to just uh, don't, be, don't be discouraged. Don't be hopeless. Keep hope alive. Everything that is happening around us can bring about a state of hopelessness. But we serve a God who when we are connected with, our hope is stronger. And our hope will give us, will lead us to the places where, to the promises where he has promised us. So I just want to thank you for coming, for joining us this evening. Be sure to join us again tomorrow evening at 7.30 for our midweek refuel service. Uh, on Friday at uh, 12 noon for our prayer response. And then on Sunday for our celebration service. God bless you and see you tomorrow.